Natasha Clark joins me in the studio to discuss. Natasha, morning. Morning, Nick. Yes, of course, you saw that very graphic footage, which that's exactly the words that Pat McFadden used when he was speaking to you about it just a minute ago. Reform uh, Party have said it's damning and they are calling on him to quit as an MP. They say it's never acceptable for anyone to resort to violence to solve a dispute. And they say that the people of Runcorn and Hellsbeat deserve far better than this. Now, of course, like you said, he's been suspended as a Labour MP, which means he can't sit in the House of Commons in the Labour Party. He's being interviewed under caution by Cheshire Police. He says he's cooperating with them, but it could be quite a while before he faces the music and potentially a by-election. Now, there are three circumstances where an MP can face a recall petition and potentially a by-election. So if they're convicted in the UK and sentenced to time in prison. So at the moment, if that happens, it would be an incredibly long way off. The second, if they're suspended from the House of Commons, if the Committee on Standards recommends a more than 10 days suspension. Now, I've contacted them this morning to see whether there is an investigation being opened into uh, Mike Amesbury. They have yet to respond uh, to, to that allegation. Um, and thirdly, if they're convicted under fake expenses claims, false expenses claims, so obviously that won't occur here. Um, so the maximum, obviously, sentence for that, you know, six months in prison for, for assault or, or battery. Um, and obviously, if it's if it's actually more than that, actual bodily harm, and you've seen that footage, Nick, it's pretty, yes. um, pretty graphic and pretty, like I say, it looks pretty clear uh, cut, but obviously we wait for the police uh, to do uh, their investigation. So yes, if that recall petition is triggered, voters then have six weeks to sign a petition calling for another by-election to happen in his constituency. So if 10% of voters say yes, we would like to see uh, that MP kicked out. The MP can then stand again if they choose to do so. Some MPs in the past have chosen to stand again in their recall petitions uh, and none of them actually have faced, uh, have, have been able to be re-elected uh, in this. But e equally, Nick, it's a very interesting seat and one obviously that Labour should expect to win. But if you look at the um, uh, the results of the last uh, election, uh, reform actually came second in that uh, constituency. So this hence is hence their interest exactly. And this right. is something that actually, of course, reform will absolutely jump at the idea for a by election in this constituency where they did uh, come in a very uh, close second to third. Um, the Conservative candidate um, came third just by around a thousand votes. So they will be really hopeful that if there is a recall petition, and lots of people in Westminster do think it's quite likely uh, that they will be able to potentially nick that seat for reform. So senior uh, Labour frontbencher Pat McFadden, when I was speaking with him, what, about 20 so minutes ago, said we must wait, we must wait, we must wait for the police. They could run independently, couldn't they? The police investigation and the Standards Commission, they don't, they're not reliant upon each other, presumably. Yes, they're not. They could, and I imagine what will probably happen is that Standards Commission will open an investigation into whether Mike Amesbury has, you know, brought the House into disrepute with this. And I think that's, you know, that's a fair question. It's that many Labour he hasn't. Many Labour MPs, of course, are asking that question whether he has brought the House into disrepute. And obviously the idea that he's a constituent uh, as well um, will obviously bring in more questions into that. So there's no reason why they can't run consecutively. And I imagine we will... We will see MPs uh, look into this as well as the idea of the police investigation at the same time. LBC's political editor, Natasha Clark, reporting. So it's been claimed the two men did not know each other. The incident kicks off in the Cheshire market town of Frodsham. Now, the MP had spent the evening at a meeting with residents, the local policing team and Cheshire's Labour Police and Crime Commissioner, Dan Price, to discuss policing priorities and concerns. Well, he probably added to some of those priorities, I imagine. And then, as we said already, Mr Ainsbury bends over the man, having punched him just once while he was standing with his hands in his pockets. So what future now for that one-time MP? Well, let's turn to Maxine thompson Curl, who's the director of One Punch UK, a charity spreading awareness of the dangers of physical altercations such as these. Because although for some people it is rather comedic to see a constituent being dealt with in this fashion, sadly for you, it brings back some very unfortunate memories. May I call you Maxine? Good morning. Absolutely. Good morning. Thank Good morning. you for coming on, Maxine. Why are you feeling this so personally and what is the, what's the driving force of your campaign? Um, the driving force of this campa my campaign is my son. Um, but can I just stop everything and just say, what about this man who's been hit? Is anybody, do we know how well he is or is he in hospital? Is he being treated? He's declining actually... to give interviews at the moment. Sorry, do go on. Yeah. Yeah, OK. So he's still, he survived it. Thank yes, God. He did. Yes, he does. Thank yeah. God. Um, yeah, OK. Um, my son, Christian, um, exactly the same, really. He was, his hands were in his pockets um, in the toilet when he was assaulted by a 24-year-old male. Mm. This was 14 years ago, and for 14 years I've been um, campaigning and raising awareness about what a one-punch assault can do. Um, you know, and this, this MP, out of, you know, respect, really needs respect for the victim that he's hurt, he he needs to resign, doesn't he? He needs to resign. He doesn't, you know, wait for the police to investigate. No. Or I mean, the victim know, here is able to 
if you've watched the video, he, he seems able to break his fall by putting his left arm out, which takes the impact. Of yeah. course, sadly, if, if he'd been knocked flat, unconscious, out cold, he could have struck the back of his head and yes, we could be absolutely. in a very different position now, Maxine. And that's exactly what happened to my son I and many others that, that we okay. work with and support. And, and, you know, we support lots of families all throughout the country um, who have gone through exactly the same thing, yes. I mean, to be honest with you, Nick, I haven't watched it because I can't no. bear. I, I can't bear to watch any being, being struck. No. Um, but then he went to Adam four or five times and that's with intent. So for my son, it was um, just grievous bodily harm because the man hit him once. He didn't, he didn't need to hit him again. He was unconscious on the floor. Um, yeah. But he's gone back three or four times, so it has got to be with intent. That is what the law will state. It'll be grievous bodily harm. I'm grateful. Good luck with your charity, One Punch UK. Maxine Thompson Curl, thank you. It's seeking to spread awareness of the danger of that single punch. And you help victims as well. Let's not get a little ahead of us and decide what charges might be brought, if I can just caution you on that point. And I understand you won't have seen the video, but just to clarify, not that this justifies it, but he's not out cold. He is still conscious, but he's down on the ground as the MP continues to punch him a further six times. Thank you for your input. Both men have made contact with the police. I need to tell you that the MP has voluntarily has offered himself a voluntary interview under caution. He has been released. Meanwhile, at his five-bedroom detached home, worth £685,000, by the way, his wife Amanda yesterday told reporters to um, clear off. But it's a different word, and it starts with P, and I don't need to tell you any more. What now for this man? Michael's in Leighton. What should happen, Michael? Good morning. Good morning. I worked for the railway two months short of 30 years before I retired. Um, one of the keenest courses that the company would send staff on was conflict avoidance. Right. And uh, one of the first things you're told is if you feel threatened, move to a place of safety. Right. That clearly didn't happen uh, in this instance. If the MP felt threatened, why didn't he walk away? The other aspect was that we were always told a uh, certain body language to use yep. to diffuse situations, and that certainly didn't include throwing a punch. Now, as we speak, 8.14, you're listening to LBC News Breaking at this hour, it's just been reported that a man has been ordered to stay away from MP. He'd been found guilty of stalking. We don't know if this is the same man. This dates back a little over 12 months. This is another man from Tarpoli in Cheshire, convicted last year of stalking Mark Ames, Mike, Mike Amesbury, convicted of stalking him. He was given a restraining order. Uh, he had been seen. Now, again, this was last year. He had followed Mr Amesbury to his car and approached him in Frodsham, which is the same town. Again, we don't know. If it is, if it is this same person, is that any form of mitigation? Last point to you, Michael. No, there isn't, because if he felt threatened, he should have walked away. I'm sure someone who he was with uh, that evening had a mobile phone. Why didn't they phone the police? And uh, certainly throwing a punch at someone that had their hands in their pockets just seems ridiculous.